Hello guys. So today in this video, we will learn something called as sklearn pipelines. Uh, I'll tell you why we need pipelines and how we can use them. And I will also show you some issues uh, while we use column transformers and how we can overcome it. Okay. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, if you know the steps involved in training any machine learning model, so you know that we, we will have the data with this, right? and we will split this data right split it into train and test set correct so once we do this we do all the pre-processing on train right we do everything so when i say pre-processing it includes handling missing values handling categorical values and scaling it could be either min max scalar or standard scalar etc right so when we do all this pre-processing we will apply the same same pre-processing on our test set so what we do while uh, still in the process of training on the training set we will say we will use a method called as fit transform right so which will fit on this training data and transform it accordingly but while applying the same pre-processing on test data set what we will do we will just say transform so, you guys uh, would have already understood what's the difference between fit transform and transform. Uh, this is used on training and this is on test. Right? So, what happens? Whatever the patterns in the training data, it will learn with the help of fit method and then it will apply using the transform method on that particular training set. And whatever pattern it has learned, the, let's say the min max scalar or standard scalar or one hot encoder okay all those things they will learn the pattern in the training set and then apply that onto the training set using the transform method so combining both fit transform it's a method what it will do it will learn the pattern and then it will apply that particular pattern as per the need then on the test set what we will do we will not again learn the patterns on the test set we will just use the learnings from the training set and just apply those transformations on the test set so this is the basic difference between fit transform and transform okay now in the process of doing this let's say we will create multiple uh, methods so in order to handling handle missing values let's say i create a method called as define handle handle missing values and this thing i will pass the data i need to call it twice one for training set and once for test set right and Similarly, if I have something to, or uh, let's say, to handle the categorical data, so I will define a function, define handle categorical data, cat data, and again I need to call this twice, once on the training set and second time on the test set. Correct? So, like this, any pre processing step, if we are not using the pipeline, we will have to define the methods and we have to repeat them. Two times one on once on the train set and once on the test set so in order to avoid this there is something called as pipeline which is provided in the sklearn library okay pipeline so what we can do we can group the steps here okay so let's say handle missing values is one step handle missing values handle categorical values when I say uh, values, you think, if, think of it as features. Handle missing values in the feature, handle categorical features, scale the features, and in the end, in the end, train the model. So you can combine all these steps in an object of type pipeline. Okay. And on the training data, what you can say on this particular pipeline object you can call fit method and then pass your x and y from the training data once you do this okay what it will do when we call pipeline dot fit method it will use fit transform method for all these pre processing steps on the training data but when we use pipeline dot predict method so if i use pipeline dot predict and here of course i will pass my x test correct when it sees predict it has to do the same pre-processing on this test set while it was doing uh, 
uh, while considering the training set right so what it will do instead of fit transform on the test set it will just say transform it will just use the method transform on the test set so in this way if there are any manual errors that would have occurred calling the pre processing steps twice once on training and test set test data this will help us to avoid that manual error and the application would be uniform when i say application application of the pre processing steps would be uniform on both the data sets so this is one of the main advantages of pipeline now in order to build a pipeline we will make use of something called as column transformer column transformer so what is this column transformer so let's say we have a, a data set wherein uh, let's say the column we have gender age uh, let's say if if we just look at the titanic data set that, that i have here you can say uh, the name gender ticket ticket is one of the columns which is of type string right so different columns are of different types and requires different pre processing right so ticket etc so this is of type string ticket is also of type string and age is of type integer or in general you can call it as numeric right so each of these columns or features require different transformations we need to handle each of these columns differently in a different way right so let's say we have some missing values in gender so we we have to impute them when i say impute we have to supply some values to them and age column age column will vary largely right so it can vary from 1 year to 100 years so we will have to scale this feature scale this particular feature so that the values will be in a range okay so that we will have the better convergence on the machine learning models so similarly ticket so if at all this is an important feature we need to handle this in a different way so in order to accommodate this step we have something called as column transformer and we can define what kind of transformer we have to apply on each of these columns and making use of these column transformers we can construct a pipeline so what we can do let's say we have a three column transformer specified okay and let's say column transformer 1 column transformer 2 and column transformer 3 and in the pipeline we can specify the name of the step and the column transformer so like this we can chain these steps we can chain these steps right multiple steps into a pipeline so on and so forth so now once we are done with this we can say pipeline dot fit on training data and on test data we can say pipeline dot predict okay so till now i have given you the background and why we need pipeline now we will see how we can make use of pipeline library pipeline method in the sklearn library and what is the issue associated with it and how we can solve it i am just showing you one of the ways to solve it uh, let let's get started with that particular stuff now okay so here what i have done i have imported the required libraries i have read the titanic data set here okay so the libraries just for your reference i have imported the two standard libraries numpy and pandas then i will split this particular data into train and test set we have to do that using train test split method from model selection then for pre processing let me i have imported standard scalar and one hot encoder one hot encoder is basically to convert the categorical features into numerical columns okay and standard scalar is to scale the feature values to have it in a range okay so this will actually convert the feature into standard normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one okay so i'll cover those concepts in my other videos and then i have imported simple imputer so in order to handle the missing values and in order to construct a column transformer i have imported column transformer in order to construct the pipeline i have imported pipeline and just to showcase you how do we train the model using sklearn pipeline i am importing random forest classifier so 
the idea or the reason for this video is to not to consider the data complicated data set and to try to train a model on that instead the idea for this video is to understand what are pipelines how we can make use of them and what are the issues associated with using column transformer okay so now let's get started so first of all in any machine learning process machine learning project we will check for missing values right so first of all we will check the number of rows and columns using the shape so we have 891 records and 12 columns right and if we want to check for missing columns we can say data df dot is null dot sum so this will give us the count for each of the column of the missing values so age column has 177 missing values cabin column has 687 missing values embark has two missing values okay so if you look at it out of 891 records cabin column has around 80 80 or more than 80 percent of the records missing so what we can do we can straight away drop this particular column okay and similarly we will drop passenger id name and ticket okay so we will first drop these columns so let's drop them so how we can drop it data df dot drop and i will specify the column names so i do not want passenger id okay and i do not want name column i do not want to have ticket because this doesn't help us in model prediction okay and similarly i want to drop cabin column because it has more than 80 percent of the re uh, records missing so it will be of no use and even we cannot input with such small 15 20 percent of the values right so that's why i'm dropping cabin and axis is equal to one and i want it to be in place in place is equal to true okay then now if i check for missing values is null dot sum i should be having missing values only for age and embark now what we have to do now if i check data df dot head so you can see we have different columns one two three four five six columns are of type numeric and one two two columns are of type object or categorical so first what we have to do first step what i will do is i will handle missing values okay so this is how my pipeline looks like now so handle missing values so this is my first step in data preprocessing once i do this my second step will be to impute the missing data impute missing data when i say impute missing data i want to fill the missing data with some value okay so for this case i will make use of simple imputer once i impute the missing data what i will do i will handle categorical columns categorical columns and how i will handle this categorical columns i will use one hot encoding to convert the categorical columns into numerical columns okay once i handle the categorical columns i will scale the features scale the features and in the end i will train the model which model i am training i am training random forest classifier so this is going to be my pipeline steps okay so now we will for each of these steps we will define a column transformer okay but before this we have to split the data into train and test set right so let's do that so i'll say split the data into train and test set so how i can do that so x train comma x test comma y train comma y test is equal to train test split okay and i will pass data df dot drop 
I need to drop this survived column from my x values, right? Because survived is a target class, target feature, not the uh, independent features. It's a dependent feature. That's what we have to predict. So I will drop that from the list of x, but it will not be affected on the original data frame because I am not setting in phase to true here. Okay. So I'll say survived axis is equal to 1. Okay. These are my x. So what are my x? Except this, all these columns are my x. Now, similarly, I have to specify my y. So, how I can do that? Data df of survive. So, this is my y. So, now I will set my test size to let's say 20 percent. Okay. So, let us not worry about a randomization and any other stuff because we are concentrating on how to use the SQL and pipeline. So, now I have split the data into two groups. Now, what I can do? I can quickly check the shape, exchange shape and x test shape. So, 7 pearl records will be used for training the model and 179 records will be used for testing the model. Okay. So, now let us, once we have this, we are ready to create the column transformers. Okay. So, what I will do? I will just create a heading here. Let us create column transformers. Okay. So, first one, I will be handling the missing values, right. So, I will just give it a inline heading there, handle the missing values. So, here I will say column transformer CTRA or let me say CTRS for imputing. So, I need to impute the missing values, right. So, column transformer for imputing is equal to column transformer and I will say uh, it column transformer, it actually takes the list of tuples, okay. So, this will be list of tuples. Now, I have to pass in the tuples here. So, just for the sake of alignment, let me just quickly do this and here I will pass the name of the uh, name of the column transformer. Okay, It is not actually the column name or the transformer name, it is just the name given for that particular transformer. So, I will say impute age. So, I have I have missing values in age and embarked, right. So, what I will do, I will first impute age column and then I will impute embarked column. Okay. So, how I can do that? Impute age, comma. I will use simple imputer. By default, the strategy would be mean value. So, I will not specify that. Okay. And then on which column I have to apply this? Now comes the trick part. So, you can specify the name of the column here or you can specify the index. I would prefer to specify the index because the output of each column transformer here output of each of this column transformer will be passed to the next transformer as numpy array instead of pandas data. Okay, it will be a numpy array. Everything will be numpy array and we will not have the column names stored. So, what we will do? We will specify the index here. So, at which index we have age column. So, for that let me just quickly display x train dot head. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, age is that second index. So, I will pass number 2 here. So, this is the first column transformer for column age. Next, similarly, what I will say? I will say impute. I need to impute this embarked because embarked is also having missing values, right? So, what I will do? Impute embarked. And I will make use of same simple imputer, but the strategy would be, it will be most frequent, most frequent. So, basically I am replacing the missing values with modes, okay. Most frequent values are called as modes, right, in statistics. Of course, they are called as mode, mean and everything in numeric, but you can think of it as a mode replacement, okay. And now I have to specify the index for that particular column. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I will specify 6 here. Okay. 
this is how we handle the missing values using column transformer so now i want to show you the issue with this particular execution okay so uh, I, of course i have to create multiple uh, column transformers we have just handled age and embark for now but what i want to show you right now is the issue associated with the column transformers okay so let me quickly create a pipeline okay so let me call it as a transform pipeline is equal to pipeline and here again it also takes the list of tuples okay so just the same thing list of tuples so it will be the name for the first step so i'll make use of the same variable name as my name okay so impute imputing the values and i will pass in the column transformer actual column transformer so this is my pipeline wherein i have only one step so this doesn't make sense but i am doing this just to show you the issue associated with this column transformer okay so now i will have this and then what i'll say i will say transform pipe dot fit let me say fit transform and i'll pass my extrain data so transform pipe okay so there is a mistake here now we pipe out that there's no attribute fit trans okay it's again a typo sorry now you can see it is returning me a numpy array of only two columns and what are those columns whatever columns i have used in my column transformer one is age and another one is embark so in order to avoid this what we have to do we have to specify a parameter here called as reminder is equal to pass through by default it will be set to drop uh, that's why we are not seeing any other columns other than the used columns here okay so if i set reminder equal to pass through and then execute this pipeline you will see all the columns are included but again we have another issue here what is that issue the column order is not it, it it's jiggled now right it's not preserved the column order is not preserved so what is the first column in this array the first column is of age right and the second column is embark and then we will have p class sex sib sp parch and fair so why the order is changing because that's how column transformers are made to work that's how they return the numpy array and what will be the order the order will be it's the same as we have used the columns in this column transformer so the first column we have used is age so in the output numpy array the first column will be for age and then the second column will be whatever column we have used as a second step within this transformer in this case we have used embark as our second column in order to impute it so we are seeing embark column here so in order to prevent this we have to do something crazy so what is that we have to use pass through for each and every column so right now we have this uh, p class and all right so just give me a second let me quickly uh, get that code snippet so that uh, the time is not wasted in typing it okay so what we can do we will now now you have seen the issue right so this is what the issue associated with it so let me quickly uh, write that down the column order is not preserved in after applying column transformer after applying column transformer okay and also we have to set reminder to pass through otherwise we will lose other columns or features so these are the two main issues so now we have seen how we can avoid losing the columns by setting reminder equal to pass through now i will show you how we can preserve the column orders so i will make another heading here how to preserve column orders 
while using column transformers okay so now i am showing you so what i'll do i'll quickly copy the content that i have here with me so i will create the column transformers again starting from the scratch okay and then we'll create the pipeline again so what i have done here i have created a column transformer first i am handling missing values so same way i am not changing any order so extrain dot head so what i am doing i am first filling out the miss, miss, missing values what are those age and embark so what i'll say in order to preserve the column order right in order to preserve the feature order as it occurs in the data frame so what we have to do whichever columns we are not using in this particular column transformation we have to set it to pass through and pass in the indexes of those particular columns so in this case i am just handling the missing values for age and embark right so other columns i have to leave as it is and in order to maintain the order of those columns i have to specify the columns in order and set it to pass through transformer so it's a special string which will say i will pass through the columns whichever is specified in this particular indices and then i will go to next step so the, my next step is to impute i'll impute this particular column at this particular index next again is a pass through for these particular columns at these indices and then i will again use a simple imputer for the column at this particular index so what i am saying i want to pass through p class sex column as it is right so i'll give it a name i'll give it some name p class underscore sex i'll pass through as it is and i'll pass the indices for these two columns p class is 0 sex is 1 so i have passed in the indices next comes age so i have to impute it right impute the missing values so what i'll say i'll give the name as impute age i'll use a simple imputer as transformer and then i'll specify the column index of age column so here the column index of age column is 2 okay then what i'll say i'll need to pass sip sp and parch and fair as it is i do not have to apply any transformation but in order to preserve the ordering i have to make use of something like this so i'll say i'll give a name sip sp parch fair i will pass through all these three columns as it is and i'll give the indices for these particular columns so that is 0 1 2 3 4 5 so 3 4 5 are my column indices which i have to pass through as it is once i am done with these three things i come to the column embarked which i have to impute using a simple imputer strategy will be most frequent okay and the column index will be 6 so this is how you can maintain the column order or preserve the column order okay so now i'll just create this column transformer so similarly what i'll do i will create another column transformer to handle the categorical values so i'm following these steps okay so i have imputed the missing data right handle the missing data means i have imputed the missing data now i have to handle the categorical values so in order to handle this categorical value i will create another column transformer wherein i will make use of one hot encoding for sex and embark columns so what i will do i will say so again i have to preserve the column order right so p class i have to pass through as it is by providing the index now i have to apply one hot encoding on column sex one hot encoding sex is the name given for that particular column transformation i will use one hot encoder method I do not want it to be sparse, so I'll set it to false and unknowns will be ignored. It will not be errored out. And I have to pass the column name on which I have to apply one hot encoder. I have to sorry, I have to specify the column index on which I have to apply the one hot encoder. So in this case, it is sex. So 0, 1, it's a first index. Okay. Then I have to pass age SIBSP parts and fit as it is. Okay. So I'll just say pass through. I'll give some name. I'll, I have just used the column name for the convenience sake, and I'll say pass through as it is. This is to just maintain the or preserve the column order. Okay. And then 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are the column indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll pass through them as it is. And then in the end, for embarked, 
I'll use one hot encoding. So one hot encoding embarked is the name given for that particular column transformation. And I'm specifying one hot encoder as my transformer. And on which column I have to apply, I have to specify the index. So that's a six column. So I have specified the column index. Okay. So remainder, if there are if at all there are any remainders after this, it will be passed through. In this case, you do not have to set it because I have specified all the columns. So there is no point in setting remainder equal to pass through. Okay. So I have created now I have completed this particular step here. Handle categorical columns. So I have used one hot encoding here. Right. So now we will see how we can scale the features using the column transformer. So for that, what I'll do, I'll create another column transformer and I'll apply standard scalar on the numerical columns. Okay. So I'll say I'll give some name to that particular transformer, column transformer. I'll give a name standard scalar because I'm using standard scalar to scale the feature values. And which transformer I'm using? I'm using standard scalar transformer. And on which columns I have to apply the standard scalar. Now this is interesting. So we will have to apply the scaling only on those features which vary in a very large way. Okay. So the features which are varying in a very large way are only age and fair. Okay. So what we'll do, we will specify the indices of age column and fair column for this particular standard scalar transformer. Okay. So this will be done. So now if we do this, I'll execute it. Now I have created another column transformer. Okay. So after doing all this, what we will do? We will initialize the model. Model is equal to random forest classifier. I will use all the default parameters. I will not tune it or I will not specify anything else. Okay. Now what we will do? We will create a pipeline. So instead of naming it as model, let me name it as classifier. So let me just call it a CLF classifier. Okay. So let's create a pipeline now. The pipeline. Okay. So how we can create pipeline? So I'll call this as model and I'll say pipeline. Then what I'll do, I will need to pass each of these column transformers along with my model in the end. So again, pipeline also takes list of tuples as its arguments. So I'll start with the list here. And I'll need to pass in the tuples. So the tuples would be the name of the particular step in the pipeline and the actual pipeline, actual step of the pipeline. Okay. So here, what I'll say, handle missing values. Okay. So I'll say handle missing values, handle missing values, and which transformer we are making use of? We are making use of this particular transformer, CTRF impute. So we are imputing the missing values okay so this is how we can specify the first step in the pipeline so for the second step you have to specify another tuple so the second tuple will be to handle the categorical columns right so i'll say handle categorical columns so for this which is my imputer uh, so sorry the transformer it is ctrf categorical okay so then my third step would be to scale the feature values, right? So I'll say scaling and which is the column transformer for that? It will be CTRF scaling. Okay. So once this is done, the next would be to train the model. So I'll say train. That's the step name. And which model I'm training? I'm training random forest classifier, which I have initialized it to a variable called as CLF. So this will be object of class random forest classifier. Okay. And then what I'll do, I will create this particular pipeline. So now if you want to check this pipeline, I can just say model, it will give me the steps involved in this particular pipeline. But if you want to look at in a diagrammatical way, what you can do, you have to set the configuration to display it as a diagram. So for that, you have to import set config and then what you have to do you have to say set config display is equal to diagram by default it will be string or text so you are seeing this but now if i check this model you will see the beautiful pipeline here 
okay so it will give you everything so i am just passing through this particular columns p class x then i am imputing age column i am passing through these three columns i am imputing m bar and i am passing the remainder columns as it is then after this so this is actually handling handle missing values column transformer after i i am done with handling missing values i am going for handling categorical values so all the steps that you have defined in this particular column transformer you will be seeing in this particular step here and then once we handle categorical columns we will come up with scaling okay and then we will train the model random forest classifier so now in order to train this model what we can do we can say model dot fit i will pass in x train and y train so this will fit the model so now it's done so now what we can do we can check the training score in the same way so model dot score i'll say x train comma y train so it is giving me 98% accuracy and let me predict now let me say uh, predictions okay and this will be on test set test data set right so how i can predict i can predict using model dot predict and x test so now you have to understand few things here when i say so you see here till i called fit method on this particular model okay so this thing this particular step here so till i call this fit method on this pipe pipeline object that is model all the column transformers are applied okay and then in the end we are training the random forest classifier so this is how the pipeline works though the the pipeline comes into action when you call the fit method on that particular pipeline object okay and this will be applied on whatever data that we pass through okay so this is the first step and the first thing that you have to remember coming to predictions so how does predictions work so model is a pipeline object right so this is a pipeline object right you have to remember this understand this okay listen to it carefully so what we are doing we are calling the predict method on the pipeline object and passing the test data so once the pipeline object sees predict method it will again apply all the column transformers or all the steps in the pipeline all the steps in the pipeline but instead of using fit transform it will just make use of transform method in order to apply all these column transformers okay handling missing values handling categorical values this will be used only for transform while training it which method will be used fit and train method will be used okay so while training when we call fit method we will make use of fit and transform for this column transformations okay so this thing you have to remember it's very very important okay so once we do this i'll execute this i'll have my predictions ready with me okay so now what we can do we can actually check the accuracy score so let me quickly import from sklearn dot matrix import accuracy score okay so what i'll say i'll just call this accuracy score and it takes actual and predictions right so i'll say y test and predictions it will give me the accuracy of around 78.77 percent okay so if you try out this you will not, you may not be able to replicate the exact accuracy scores because this is just random i haven't set any random seed so if you want to reproduce the results you can set the random seed during test train split and while doing the classifier while training the model when i say while training the model you can set the random seed here while initializing the machine learning algorithm okay so hope you have understood why we need pipeline so if we haven't defined this pipeline guys so before predicting before we pass x test to predict we have to go through all these steps right 
we have to handle missing values we have to handle categorical columns no doubt we are handling it internally but manually if you are handling it there is a large scope for making errors so in order to avoid that we will first construct a pipeline and then we will create a object of that pipeline class and then we will train that particular pipeline object if we have the model in that and it will take care internally when it encounters the fit method it will use fit transform method for all the column transformers for all the pre processing steps and then when it encounters the predict method it will just apply transform method for the pre processing steps okay and then predict method for the actual ml model so in this video what i have explained you i have explained you why we need pipeline without pipeline it would be very cumbersome task it will take a lot of time and what are column transformers i haven't explained this in detail but you have got the idea probably i will cover the column transformers in detail in my other video okay and what are the issues i have also covered what are the issues associated with column transformers so this will first thing is it will remove the it will drop the columns which are not used in that particular column transformer so that's the first issue so in order to overcome that you have to set remainder equal to pass through and the main issue is it will not preserve the column orders while using the column transformers right so this is one of the main issues which we have to figure out how we can handle this so this was a small data set and i was able to specify it this way hard coded way but if you just think of any scenario where we have more than 20 30 features it would get difficult right so i am exploring the options to overcome this i am sure there should be something uh, which i am missing if you guys know how we can handle this in a different way please reach out to me in comment section i will be happy to learn it and then i'll definitely release a video by making use of that way. okay so hope you like the content if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers uh if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and see you all in the next video happy learning bye